This is the One More Comfort Buds Mini, a true wireless noise cancelling earbud that is part of this growing trend of shrinking things down to really compact dimensions, as you can probably already tell. And the wonderful thing is, it is not just miniaturization for the sake of miniaturization either. These don't skimp on some of the latest mod cons or require you to pay a lot for the privilege. Yes guys, it's a great time if you're in the market for a pair of earbuds right now. So join me in this video and let's find out and see if these Comfo Buds are truly dope or nope. After these messages. Whoosh. Specs wise, the Comfo Buds Mini is quite decked out. It's priced at just under $100 and comes in mica white or this one, obsidian black. You got active noise cancellation, pass through, mono mode, and wear detection, aka auto pause play. There's Bluetooth 5.2 circuitry supporting AAC and SBC only. There is no aptX option. Each earbud weighs 3.7 grams, which for your reference is the equivalent of three potato chips, four micro SD cards, or about five grams heavier than the brain of a certain Russian president. From my test of the earbuds for battery life set at 65% volume, I managed 6.2 hours with ANC off and 4.7 hours with it on. And by the way, if you leave it on with no media playing, there's the option to auto power off after 40 minutes. Water resistance is a strong IPX7, which means you can listen to, I don't know, your Joe Rogan podcasts in the shower, but why would you want to anyway? The plastics utilized on these earbuds are very nice indeed guys. They offer good grip all around even with sweaty or greasy fingers. And unlike the color buds too, remember that video which I found ergonomically challenging to remove from the case? These things, the minis are spot on. With them inside back in the case, I can pinch them from any direction and they'll come right out. Uh, there are two mics per side that handles the active noise cancellation as well as phone calls. Wear detection sensor is right here flanked by the charging contacts. In the business end of things, there's a 7mm driver doing all the grunt work work porting sound through a really so short sound channel that ends with a mesh grill. Really nice stuff. But one of my least favorite things here is the ear tips. They're really slow to reinstall and it doesn't give you any kind of audible indicator that is back in place. No clicking or whatever. So yeah, thumbs down to that. However, if there was like a close to perfect storage case award, this might win it. The perceived and actual build quality is similar to the year, but it's nice and tight, no creaks. And check this out with the lid open, no twisting whatsoever. Pretty darn impressive. And matte plastics for the win, yo, inside and out. But I do say the plastic shows scratches up to a point and also repel oil and grease pretty well. Right here front and center, you probably saw it a second ago coming on the LED status light. And here on the right side is the reset button. You can barely tell it's there. And wireless charging is located on the only flat surface on the casing, which is nice. Uh, USB-C charging port is right here at the bottom. The lid is held closed by a magnet and locks in place when open. Thank goodness. The earbud cavities are nice and shallow as you can see and are easy to keep clean. And since we're here, let's pop this back in and do the shake test and see how that does. Oh yeah, thumbs up for the earbuds, they stay put. I recently went through the One More app in more detail, like how to set up sound ID and all that. So I'm not gonna bore you here again. If you wanna check that out, follow the link above on the top right. However, I briefly touched on the burn-in feature in that last video and it's located, here's the home screen with the minis connected and it's located in settings under here and smart burn-in. And I realized I was doing you a disservice by not fully testing it. So this time I ran the mini through the required 12 hours to supposedly season the drivers. And the question is, did I see any improvements? Well, the short answer is not really. And I'll talk more about that in the sound quality section. It looks green like spring, but it is bloody cold. It's 19 degrees, but with wind chill, it feels so much colder than that. But we're out here uh, with the Comfort Buds Mini doing the Bluetooth range test. There's uh, Scary Pockets playing some issues on uh, Tidal right there on my phone on Pixel 6 and it's at the end of my deck right here. And we're gonna walk around the side, back of my house towards the side. And these things have Bluetooth 5.2. Oh my goodness, the wind, can you hear? Yeah, we just got a signal uh, cut out right there. That's around about 42 feet, so not too bad. Uh, gonna keep walking until we get a full disconnect. And speaking of tones, uh, as I mentioned in the previous one more review, I love the uh, sound effects that they have on these. These sound have these little when they go, when anything you, anything you touch, all the touch tones 
uh, are very nice. It sounds almost like a hotel lobby elevator or something. Uh, I got a disconnect tone back around 51 feet. Uh, let me see if we, uh, when, once we get back into range, whether these things uh, reconnect and start playing again. Usually they don't, but it's a nice thing to have. And you can see the fit of these in my ears. Really nice and compact. I love the sun today. Uh, really nice and compact. They sit really well. I'm gonna try running. It's really muddy at this time of the year. And they are super comfortable, perfect for running. Um, yeah, they don't shift around at all. So uh, there is fit uh, for you guys. Let's move on to the front of the uh, house here so we can uh, test the mics on these things. Yeah. Walking directly in the wind right now. Here, oh, there's the big truck you probably heard in the recording. Uh, you can hear how these things handle uh, wind suppression also. Um, I've tested these over and over again. I just can't understand why my voice, everything sounds muffled, like a, like I'm under a pillow or something or a stuffy nose. Which I kind of do right now, but it's really, really exaggerated like, on these microphones. Here comes some traffic again. And the wind is just blowing from this direction. You can probably uh, hopefully pick it up in the recording. How's that? How's that sounding? Yeah, not a fan of how muffled it is, but at least there is no clipping. I tested these uh, along side by side with the Powell Z ones, uh, doing the, the recording on the same day. Those things just fall apart. At least right here, um, even though my voice is muffled, the clarity is decent, and there is no clipping or you know it doesn't sound like I'm underwater too much. How's that sound? So what are my top favorite things about the Mini? Well, the sound is surprisingly neutral and I would say it's best left alone as is. I was listening to Mark Anthony's new Yole Menti. You should check it out, it's really good. His warm raspy vocals on this piece, the backing bass, the mariachi trumpets, and also the rolling rhythm, they're clear, controlled, and defined. And it's both a testament of the song mixing itself as well as the tuning of these units. Now, sound staging and imaging though are a little bit too centered for my liking. I would have preferred some more immersion and spatiality in the instruments, especially like when listening to classical. The sound also kind of sort of loses composure at around 90 to 100% volume. But honestly, if you're listening to these at that volume, well, good luck to your ears. Okay, I promised earlier that I was gonna talk about this. So a quick word about the burn-in feature in the app. I ran two 12-hour burn-in cycles out of the recommended four. That's two whole days, hoping that the drivers will be at least half as seasoned as fully burn-in ones. But nope, I didn't hear any discernible difference, unfortunately. You know what? This is small done right. For the most part anyway, like handling the earbuds is so much easier than on the color buds too. And the case is small enough that you just might have to stick a tracker to it just in case you forget where you left it. A uh, fitment of the buds in my ear is good also. I found them comfortable and light. But I have to say, unlike the similar size Mifo S, I couldn't wear these minis for more than 45 minutes at a time due to some kind of weird pressure against my ear canal. Maybe that's just me. Passive and active sound cancellation is pretty dependable for the price. I wouldn't take this on a flight because it will have a hard time with jet engines, but it does a good job nullifying most low frequency sounds. A quick note though, there is a stronger than usual sensation of pressure change whenever active noise cancellation is activated, but that's my ears only, I think. Uh, and I suspect that most users will perceive this as slight hissing instead. If I had to pick a nit, it would be with Sound ID, unfortunately, because Sound ID's locked in EQ in this application it kind of ruins all the fun by muffling the sound altogether. And if you're wondering, I ran the same A-B test like multiple times, but it always came back numb. I personally wish there was some kind of actual EQ option to manipulate, or at the very least, the ability to manually tweak the final sound ID result. It's kind of weird guys, because in the color buds too, remember that part of the video where sound ID really woke it up considerably, but in the mini, it does the complete opposite. Another thing to note is that when you're shifting between active noise cancellation on and active noise cancellation off, it reveals less bass in the latter, but also at the same time more details in the mids and the highs. 
It's a small change, not anything major, and most of you probably won't even notice, but I did, and I thought I'll mention it anyway. The compact dimensions of the Comfo Buds Mini belie its rather impressive set of abilities, from like good sound to solid build and materials and active noise cancellation performance. And sure, things like battery life could be a little bit stronger, but it comes with the territory. This thing is tiny, therefore the cell is smaller. And then there's also the thing called Sound ID, which is a bust this time around. The price is great though, but I would say give it a few months and then when this hits like $75, 80 bucks, it'll be like the perfect steal. So with all that said, I'm bestowing this tiny little guy a gear up score of 8.4 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about how I got there, feel free to comment down below. Well, thank you so much for sitting through this episode. And if you like the stuff that I do, please show your support, subscribe to this channel, mash and kill the button down below, tell your friends and family about it. And you can visit my Patreon page down here too if you'd like to be a Patreon supporter. And also remember to thumbs up if you like this video and thumbs down. Hmm, thumbs down to my Zoom mic right up here. Let me pull you down so everybody can see here. If you watched my last video, the how to buy a flagship phone for less, you probably noticed the audio in that thing kind of blew and just sucked because this thing decided to eat up all my audio files after like two and a half hours of filming. Yes, so thumbs down to you, Mr. Zoom H1N. Maybe it was the SD card, I don't know. But anyways, thank you so much for watching again, for being here, and I love you guys very much. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? The world, in case you didn't know, needs it more than ever. Peace out, and I love y'all very much. God bless.